This is Karis Alexander with Deep Truth Media. Deep Truth has always been the foundation upon which I developed this construct that I live within primarily or most of the time. But the energies have been so intense lately that what I am experiencing is the areas in which I'm still under the influence of physical material reality. Yes, I too can be seduced back into the program whenever I'm engaging in my 3D experience of which for the past few weeks has been fairly intense. And so as we come up to this period of June 2nd, 2016, and I recognize what is transpiring in my life at this particular time, what is happening is the program is trying to seduce me back in to its grip based on the areas in which I am still can be easily influenced. That is those areas of the personality and the biological vehicle in which I can still be seduced back in. And so I definitely in those moments bring conscious awareness of when what is transpiring and taking place in my life and knowing that those are the areas in my life where I'm still in resistant to the programming that I'm under. And so now more than ever, what we are up against as the frequencies, the vibration of the planet increases is our resistance. So every time we're experiencing some resistance in our lives, those are test points. The resistance or tests in order to see whether you have what it takes to experience more of your essence in physicality. Your essence is there, but when we are consumed by our 3D experience, we don't experience the power of our essence. However, when one starts flowering and awakening to their essence, we start experiencing this concept of power on a whole another level. And I only can tell you through my own experience, that power I feel very confident, which may turn into a sense on the external reflective, someone listening to me on external reflective as someone that is arrogant or self-righteous. That is not my intention, but that is the chemical synthesis that happens when one reclaims their power. They may seem as arrogant. They may seem as overconfident, invincible. These are the qualities and characteristics of your essence. Your essence is sheer power. It's that formidable force that is unshakable, unmovable. It is a force that creates world. So therefore, if it is a force or the source, the very foundation of what creates all of this existence, then it would need to be powerful. However, in our physical materiality, power is corrupted. And so our experience of power in this physical dimension is power over. Or what we see on the physical external reflective is control. When we come into the knowing and remembering of the truth of who we are, and those that are mirroring or reflecting back to us aspects of ourselves from their perspective, it may seem that I'm arrogant or I'm self-righteous, or I'm overconfident. But see, that is just the power that is exuding through this biological vehicle. See, essence now, as it continuously takes up residence in physical form through this personality charis in the biological vehicle, it is actually just using the biological vehicle and the personality charis as an instrument to wield and mold and shape reality into what? essence wants or what the personality or what the astrological blueprint is revealing on the physical world stage. It's a game that we're playing in, that we're immersed in, but we have the opportunity to have control over the game now, as opposed to the game having control over the personality. So the title of this sharing is, how do you transcend physical materiality? That's the question. And we do this, what? Through our creative expression while experiencing our uniqueness which releases the mold of culture, that cultural programming that we've been born into, allowing us to be autonomous, sovereign, powerful, conscious constructs, building powerful constructs or worlds of our own and worlds with others that are unique to our individuated essence, quintessence. That's what we're up against. And yet we live in a world that's very repetitious. 
physical worlds repeat and you find that I probably repeat myself. We need to repeat ourselves. We need to continuously remind ourselves of what we are immersed in from different perspectives. It allows us to continuously remember who we are when we live in worlds which are somewhat powerful and have for the most part and do for the most part keep masses of people or consciousness unconscious. What may seem repetitious or a repeat or a reconditioning of something that I have shared in the past, it is actually allowing me to anchor more and solidify more in the construct that I am building so that I don't allow for the external reflective to influence the world in which I am creating out of the world that primarily is immersed in unconsciousness. I hope you understand where I'm coming from. So when we talk about truth from the word or the metaphor Jesus, Jesus translated the word truth in Greek as Aleth, A-L-E-T-H-E. Aleth, which means forgetting. Aleth means not to forget. And what we are not to forget is that we are co-creators of this life force, this source, this essence, awareness, quintessence that you breathe in and out each and every moment that exudes through each of us. It is a life force. Therefore, we are not and cannot be victims of our culture when we awaken to what we have been born into. The designers want us to believe in our culture so that we become slaves to it. However, in this physical dimension, we are either going through a process of involution and devolution or a process of involution and evolution. Therefore, as many of us know, evolution is not guaranteed. If we look to the external reflective and at all levels of consciousness from the perspective of the aspect patterns of any two planets traveling around the sun, we come to understand that we live within cycles upon cycles of time. These cycles upon cycles of time repeat over and over. That's why you get bored. That's why you're not that interested in your third dimensional reality at this particular time because it's a repetition. You know the repetition of the cycle upon which you've been born into. And so you become disinterested, uninterested, while those who are conscious become uninterested, while those who become more aware of their essence, quintessence, become disinterested in the physical dimension. Those who are unconscious are still consumed and interested. There is a difference. They don't understand the repetition that they are under. They don't understand the culture of which they are consumed by. So in this physical dimension, we are all familiar with the all-pervasive negative field that has been growing among people worldwide. It is an anger or underlying fear without an object yet tinged with rage. This angst is fed or fueled by mass media. It saturates all aspects of society and mass media, feeds into and feeds on this global angst, this terror, this rage, this fear, this anger, this resentment, which is a biocultural process and yet it has a kind of demonic spirit that blows where it will and yet this ang which is ridden with demonic energy is nothing less than or our longing for transcendence which in light of its enormous evolutionary power transcendence that is our essence quintessence must be and can only be as a result of us derailing this mass unconsciousness therefore you must subvert this mass unconsciousness that consumes every aspect of your life in order for you to not just survive in physical world this physical world that you were born into, but in order for you to thrive, you must remove the rose-colored glasses that keep you in a state of amnesia, in a state of unconsciousness. And you do that through your creative expression, allowing you to experience your creative expression and to create the world, the construct upon which you can interact with this physical world in a way 
that allows you to stay awake, no longer consumed by the unconsciousness of those around you. So I ask you this question, is culture real or is it a phantom of the human intellect? One can ask this question once one engages the intelligence of the heart. However, when one is isolated from the intelligence of the heart, culture is real. It is a phantom of the human intellect. When one is removed from the intelligence of the heart, one is entrained by culture and interprets culture as a survival mechanism upon which personal survival is based upon and one must respond to. And yet, in the knowing and truth of who we are as essence, a quintessence, we are culture, just as we are nature, and just as we are this evolutionary process. But we no longer have to become attached to this culture. We no longer have to be attached to this concept of nature. We no longer have to be attached to this process of evolution. We become the witness of all that is transpiring from our exalted state of nothingness. Delivery from the massive and ancient era of mind has been the intent of every great being of history. Tackling culture was a thrust behind the cross, and yet our true nature is transcendence from that cross, allowing us to awaken out of the enculturation and its power over our essence, quintessence. It was Jesus, the metaphor, who spoke of a narrow and broad way to his kingdom, a narrow way, however, only through one person at a time and one without baggage. You see, the journey into the heart and the unknown isn't a group tour. You see, our problem as an encultured people lies in the combination of our lack of individuality and our isolation from our hearts. Seekers of various goals gather in group, thinking that through sheer number, they will force the gates of wisdom, of essence, quintessence, through community of which we have this fanatical proselytization of religions, where we believe that with enough members and perhaps with enough irrational beliefs, we will overcome or succumb to our physical material reality. However, group mind will not give us the community that we so long for, no matter the numbers, because only through numbers can a community be replicated and its boundaries become more solidified and conditioned in physical materiality. Community arises in any situation where an individual believes that the community is their source of power, and yet community truly arises in a situations where the individual who has broken from the group mind into the bond of the heart is in true community with oneself, with one's uniqueness, with one's individuated sovereign mind. Therefore, effective action is personal. It is individuated, not social or cultural. The focus, the minute our focus shifts to changing the behavior of society or culture or any other person, we are projecting out and away from ourselves the solution which we so long for, therefore losing our way and moving towards tyranny. Therefore, ideally, two or three gathered in his name is probably the maximum when one gathers together. However, when individuals gather and learn from one another in community, this does create an opportunity for us to move outside the collective hive mind. When we can gather and express our uniqueness, our individual uniqueness, and not seek for anyone to concede to our individuated uniqueness, to our greatness. If we can come together and be our uniqueness and celebrate each and every one of us in our uniqueness, then we are in true power amongst one another. It is only when we concede to a group that we acquiesce our power away from ourselves. Therefore, it is important to remember that when we concede our power over to a group or to anyone who begins to take charge, that is when the cultural demonic force 
sneaks back in and we soon are at each other's throats, business as usual. So contemplate this. This is very important to understand. That is our individual uniqueness that we are seeking. When we are in alignment, true alignment with the truth of who we are, we are individual. We are autonomous. That's why individual rights is such a big thing right now or a big concept. This is why you are so bored with the external physical material reality that keeps repeating itself over and over again because it is not of your making. It is not of your uniqueness. So contemplate that. What are you creating? What unique expression do you have to give and bring to your life experience? Because it is that unique expression which will allow you to dissolve the veil of deception by you moving into your creative expression, by experiencing your creativity. In that very sheer act, you are moving progressively into alignment with the truth of who you are and you are actively becoming a co-creator in the world in which you are wanting, not the world that's being imposed upon you. Therefore, we must become more conscious of what we are projecting outward and we must become protective like a mother would a child of what is being projected onto us by the unconsciousness of the world around us. Therefore, we must create a firewall for our conscious mind and our subconscious mind from psychic infection or inoculations of the world around us. Therefore, in an uncultured mind, resentment demands retribution and that punishing we must come to know strengthens culture, which strengthens mediocrity and reduces our ability to acquire and experience more of our essence and physicality. When we learn to use the heart as a primary mode of perception for our reality experience, we will eventually be able to dissolve our outer world from our sphere of psychic reality, which will allow each of us to stop conspiring in the destruction of the external world, allowing each of us to release any repressed unconsciousness that is projecting from the world of things through our ex a subjective experience. Therefore, to pursue this revision of psychic reality implies that we shall have to let our present sustaining paradigm break down, which is a catastrophe of the mind rather than of the world, allowing us to emerge as essence truly is a renaissance in the midst of a world of chaos. It is through this process that we learn that the personal self is not manifesting under its own volition. Therefore, we must create new models of learning which are experiential, community-oriented, whereby learning becomes a community experience. Because we are situated in the mind that is the mind of God, this mind of God does not allow for one to have a sense of being in control. Therefore, those with no spiritual reference or astrological reference at this particular time in human history will have a harder time navigating their future. Therefore, I truly believe that astrology provides a sense of control, providing a map that allows each of us to navigate better the chaos of the external world. You see, people really don't have an idea of how astrology works, and yet they have theories, but not real proof of why it works and how exactly it works which kind of brings a religious theme to astrology. This is why I find astrology so fascinating and so applicable for in order to support us to transcend, come to a greater understanding of the process that we are in as a collective consciousness. Therefore, success in actualizing the potentialities represented by the creations upon which these planetary bodies, their energies, and how they're being utilized and directed in worlds such as our physical dimension will give us the necessary tool to support how we navigate within this physical world. Coming to a greater understanding of how energy is directed, contrived, and derived and analyzed through the seasons of nature, which models the ebb and flow of life, birth, death, rebirth program, 
when we dare to look at how an individual progresses through the evolution or their individuated evolution we see that evolution is not always guaranteed as we see many people self-destructing around us as they become so caught up in their own crystallized machinations and talents they fail to recognize the workings of essence behind and through their own acts and this is what leads to fateful egocentrism or a lazy easy going type of consciousness that seeks a line of least resistance or exertion now allowing this individual to integrate the creative power with the material need that is calling for the descent of essence release power through the personality and the biological vehicle what perpetuates the impossibility of this release of power is resistance which is a result of the negative possibility that operates between the two polarities of essence and matter. And when essence and matter become reversed, this creates a negative polarity, that is, the essence that should have become incorporated and active as a solution to the evolving material organism becomes corrupted within the human being and society when it comes up against its resistance, its negativity, its fear. When one becomes more integrated, one loses interest in matter and flies back to its heavenly, purely subjective realm. This is what many of you may be experiencing. And while matter, which should continue to evolve upward towards essence, falls back to the state of disintegration and chaos without enlightenment, Essence goes up, matter goes down, and following this reversal of creative polarity, the two cannot attempt integration in the present cycle. This is what happens when we do not surrender to our resistant pattern. In other words, the marriage of heaven and earth is broken. A divorce ensues, often under the compulsion of hatred, which is just as binding as love and which therefore will of necessity call forth a new cycle in order to try again. This is all that resistance is. You see, the vast majority of humanity actually has very little to do with the level of consciousness that I'm speaking of. That is a level of consciousness of the sensory perception of the heart. In other words, they cannot go further than the level of the conscious mind. Or to put it differently, they cannot respond to the evolutionary processes symbolized by the five-fold differentiation of the circle. You know, the five-pointed star or the pentagram and the vibration five? It is this group this that has reached the vibration five, which I believe most of you have, that must experience a change of gears from a dominant mentality, restless vibration five, to a vibration in which the principal characteristic response to life challenges represented by the five that is those who have moved in to the heart space and six will become integrated the level six is creation in understanding in this energy system as consciousness truly progresses in an evolutionary series it moves on by way of ever greater inclusiveness that is combining the powers of creativity gained at level five combined with creation and understanding level six balanced and effective action through the link of these two polar rhythms of masculine and feminine impulses creates a balance in creation and understanding through the heart in terms of the evolutionary responses to life at the level of creative mental processes is a result of a conscious integration of the will to create with a clear and compassionate understanding of that which called forth the creative act, your essence, quintessence. Thus, it creates the human need, whether it is personal or collective, to create material worlds. The problem that we must overcome is to integrate the new power of the our creative, unique expression which happens after the integration of the two polar rhythms of masculine and feminine impulses that come into balance. Therefore, when humanity shifts from the conscious mind to the integration of the heart as a primary lens of perception, it is a gradual process and happens 
gradually by stressing successive overtones rather than jumping from one fundamental to the next. Today we are witnessing a twofold process. On one hand, the majority of humanity is slowly shifting the focus of its mass consciousness to the level of the heart. However, those already having made the shift into the heart consciousness, an already developed minority, is hesitantly beginning to incorporate into its approach to experience features and characteristics or qualities of character that Jesus, the metaphor, pronounced 26,000 years ago. You know, those qualities of character such as loving, joyful, peaceful, patience, kindness, good-hearted, faithful, gentle, self-control, forgiving, one who possesses humility, fairness, courage, open friendship, honesty, truthfulness, one who can be dependable, responsible, gracious, content within themselves, confident, encouraging, compassionate, enthusiastic. When we think about what we are to do here at a very deep level, we are to reclaim our power as essence in the remembrance of what we already are, and we are to mold and shape the quality and character of the personality that is experiencing through you. That is the underlying foundation of growth that we are to aspire to, is this quality of character. And when we establish this quality of character within ourselves, we create and we live and we experience differently than we have previously known to experience in this physical dimension. Therefore, we are either going through a process of involution individually and collectively and devolution or a process of involution and evolution. Therefore, as we all know, evolution is not guaranteed. If we look at the levels of consciousness upon which we experience this physical dimension, from the level of aspect patterns in relation to any two planets traveling around the sun, we then become more knowledgeable and understanding of the world in which is shaping our reality, a world in which we live in cycles upon cycles of time. It truly is a glorious time. I hope that some of what I have shared here supports you in your unfoldment as essence in physicality. That as you continue to listen here, my hope is that we and you can share our uniqueness and express our individuality without the need for consensus reality. I thank you so much for tuning in. It truly is a glorious time to be here.